Okay. <laughs> did you no. just crack? Yes, I did. I was like, I need to shoot out <laughs> I always slouch in my videos. Oh, Does it oh wait? God, no. <laughs> what, is she asking you where your ex one is? <laughs> it's better for your back too. Yes. So straight. Yes, mommy. Yes. Mommy. Yes. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <That's too much. laughs> hi, hi. Hi everyone, this is Jen and I have a special guest on my video today. A lot of you guys requested this video. My friend Becky is over. Hi guys. A lot of you guys probably know but Oppa is in Mongolia for a work trip so she's been sleeping over the past few days. We actually were talking about skincare a lot during this time. Becky has really different skin from me. My skin is very sensitive. It's really, really dry. I still get eczema from time to time, but I struggled with it a lot when I was growing up. Yeah, I've learned kind of how to control it a little bit over the years. So my skin's pretty decent right now. Yeah, your Makeup. skin looks really good <laughs> these days. But because she has such different skin and we were talking about skincare products constantly throughout the time she was here, we actually thought it would be a good thing to film something for you guys. I asked you on Instagram and a lot of you guys requested it and a lot of you guys seem to have the same skin type, eczema, dry skin. I have normal combination skin. I've got a slightly oily T-zone, but the rest of my face is either normal or I get really dry in the winter. I always give you guys recommendations from what I use, but I thought it'd be good to incorporate another person. So yeah, this is kind of like a girly chit chat video. It's not going to be an expert video where we go into ingredients and everything. Just like from a consumer's perspective, some of the things that we've personally tried and liked using could be different for you guys as well. So don't take this as a be all end all. She is actually a medical professional and practitioner, so not completely clueless, I guess. I'm but we're rusty. <laughs> Like a couple years out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll polish you. And also, I am from Sydney, but Becky is from Melbourne, if you can tell. So we have a bit yes. of rivalry here. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you. Sydney's the best city. Oh my, I don't have, okay. I don't have. <laughs> the Melbourne I don't pride know, is yeah, dead over I don't here. Melbourne pride. <laughs> no, she doesn't. We're just Aussies. <laughs> so, yes, let's begin with the video. <laughs> Okay, so I've had eczema since I was maybe about 9, 10 years old and it got a lot worse into later high school and then into university. I guess a lot of you can be a lot worse than me, but this is again just my experience. So I had a big patch um, on my elbow right here. It seems to happen a lot. Mm, I think it's yeah. a common area for a lot of people. Yeah, so like I guess a lot of you, I got a big patch here. Um, that wasn't as bad because it wasn't my face. The face one, I ended up getting a huge patch here. <laughs> but the nicest part of your face, like right here, my skin mm. would peel as a lot of you know. It would peel, it'd be red. I had to sleep with gloves on every oh. night um, for two years straight. So I wouldn't scratch the skin off my face. If I oh didn't do that, yeah, all the skin would be like ripped off my face by the morning. Whoa. And it was, um, Horrible. Duh. Yeah, and it was at that time when I had braces, I had glasses. Oh my gosh, that's like um, <laughs> every I like boys. <laughs> and then I had like this Vaseline <laughs> Oh no. So Vaseline as a just like a really basic moisturizer is really good to just protect the skin. Okay. So I would just like slather on my face here. Mm. And it was like bright red and shiny and I had braces. And it was like really, really bad. You could explain it's a new makeup trend. <laughs> <laughs> the glossy <laughs> mouth area. <laughs> and I wasn't wearing makeup at the time, so it was. Mm -hmm. I really sympathize for a lot of you that have had it in a similar position because it hurt and it hurt a lot. So I heard that if it gets bad, it can get black. Oh, yeah, I'm sure like the skin can probably die in that area mm -hmm. from just, you know, the constant inflammation. Your eczema can also be age related too, mm -hmm. um, in my experience as well. So I grew out of it by about 16. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God I grew out of that. And then when I started working, I started working when I was 22 and I ended up getting a big patch around here. And now, I just moved. Yeah, and that was a shock for me because I've never had eczema around my eyes before mm. and it was painful. Like you get out of the shower, your skin contracts and it's just become super painful if you don't moisturize straight away. Wow, it's like a really big part of your life. Yeah, and then when you're older, you need to wear makeup for work and to look presentable because it's, it's bright red, right? Mm. And, and so I had to cover it and that's not good because it, makes it, it worse. Made it more painful. But it's not like you can go out with... No, because that'll be like glowing like red mm. skin around my face. Right. And, I, and I had to see patients as an optometrist and so I had to cover it and that made it 
more painful. Oh. So around that time, I was desperate to find something that would work. So I ended up going um, on holiday around that time to America and I was looking for products. I was searching and like, oh, what's gonna work? So I came across um, a brand called Mario Badescu. They you guys have heard of it, right? Yeah, you most likely have heard of mm -hmm. it. It's pretty popular now for their, their acne products. Mm -hmm. So they specialize in products for different skin types. So eczema, psoriasis, acne. It's a New York based spa, but it's now gone worldwide. I actually didn't know that they focused on like eczema problems. I thought mm. it was just acne. But, yeah, they were known for acne, but they oh, also do other, stuff. yeah. Mm. They also do other skincare. So because they start off as like a, like a dermatological, my English, dermatological <laughs> spa, yeah. they focus on the, the problem areas. Like if you look at their website, they have something for psoriasis, something mm. for rosacea, something for acne. So you recommend that brand? From I a really non-Korean brand. I really do. Okay. Like for me, that really helped me with acne. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a lot here, but I tend to get it around the edges of my face, mm -hmm. um, and that really helps. So I've used which product? The drying creams. Okay. So I believe you used the one in the bottle, right? Yeah. You tried the one in the bottle. Yeah, I've still got it. It's the one with the little pink layer. Mm. And you dip the thing in. So Did I've, it really work that yeah. well for me though? So but. I've never tried the bottle, so I can't say for that. Uh, okay. But I've always used the tub cream. Like I'll put the info 50, down below. 15 grams or 20 yep. grams or something. But um, you choose a tiny bit of that and it'll, it gets rid of the pimples, at least for me. Like even the ones under the skin, you, you put it on diligently for a couple of days and it'll go like completely. Mm. And so I was like, oh, wow, what's this magical product? So <laughs> I've been using it since then, which was about five, six years ago. So you recommend that for acne problems? Yes. Not necessarily for eczema? Not for eczema. Oh, okay. So they have other products. There was one back then that I tried that really helped with the swelling called Calming Cream. I believe they've stopped running that because they had some problems with the cream after, but that one had some kind of natural ingredient in that that really soothed the skin. So I would put that around the mm. eyes and um, that really helped the redness. Mm. Um, that kind of reminds me of this Calming oh. Cream. Yeah, it might be really similar because it was like it was a blue color as well. So Ducks, a De Claire's one mm. called Midnight Blue Calming Cream, Guayazuline, Ceramide 3, and Centella Asiatica Extract. Yeah, that bottom one sounds familiar. So Duck, mm. there's a Korean brand. Mm. This is one that I was going to talk about mm. because I've tried this and I think it's pretty good. I actually have pretty sensitive skin too, but I think not crazy sensitive. Yeah. This is thick, it doesn't have like a strong fragrance. Um, and you can do like focused application or your entire face. Do you want to try? It leaves like a barrier. It doesn't sort of just... Oh, so like a barrier cream. The moisture doesn't fly away, but it feels like it sort of stays there. But it is quite thick. So if you're looking for some kind of refreshing feeling, it doesn't really mm, give you that. Not bad. It's not bad, right? Yeah, yeah, not bad. Okay, so we've got the suggestion of Maria Badescu. Oh, and their yeah. price point is not too bad. Mm. So after that, I came across the Clarisonic. The Clarisonic. Now, I know this is not specifically made for eczema thing but I was doing research around that time and I think some people said oh because it gets rid of the dead skin on your face it mm. helps clear up the eczema area mm -hmm. so I was a little scared my what face. if it makes it more irritated yeah I was really scared but then I was so desperate at that point because it was so painful I only used like the delicate heads or the sensitive Mm. Yeah, it actually really helped. I was very surprised. Right. I did not expect it to help at all, but I was, yeah. How did it help in particular? Just made it renew better? Or? I think, yeah, it gets rid of the dead skin and then I Less think maybe, peeling. yeah, and then improving the circulation, I think, mm. also helped. But that's I was, her personal That's experience. my personal take. When I started to use mm. it, after about a couple of weeks, it really did start to reduce the help with the reduction of the inflammation on my face. For me, I personally used it and I thought it was really good. And then after a while, it was just a bit too much work to use. So I stopped using it. Um, and also I, I didn't use the sensitive head. I used the medium oh, sensitive one. So yeah. I felt my skin was more irritated, irritated. And then I broke out a little bit more from it oh. if I used it too often. Yeah, and cleaning is really important. If you don't yeah. clean it and replace the brush heads, then you're just spreading bacteria. Exactly, so, so it was like high maintenance yeah, it is. for me. So but I stopped using it too about a year or so because I was like, oh, mm. my skin's okay now. So I guess it would be a good investment to try if you're really going through a big issue in your skin and maybe you've tried a lot of things and you want to try something else that might have an immediate effect, mm. right? Or mm. just 
just helping because I guess a lot of you know if you have really bad eczema breakouts it's really painful mm. so you'll probably try anything right if you don't have eczema a really helpful thing to use is steroid creams topical steroid creams that you put on your skin it's not the main treatment you should use because it is a medicated cream there are a lot of side effects of steroids as you probably know some can be permanent and really not good like yeah. what? So I know someone, he had quite bad eczema on his face and he used a lot of it and he ended up getting cataracts. Now he's not <gasps> much older than me. What? Yes, so cataracts, um, most of you probably know. The lens in your eye gets really cloudy mm -hmm. and so it affects your seeing. So he had to get his lenses removed and wear glasses instead. How does he um, know that it happened from that? Because it's a known side effect. Right. Yeah, so strong steroids. So he had much worse than me. So he had to take stronger steroids. That is one of the side effects. There are okay. also other side effects like skin thinning. So the area that you put the steroid on can get thinner over time. So it becomes weaker. Right. Um, so you also don't want to overuse it for that. That would lead to premature wrinkles. Yes, mm. wrinkling and just easier for to get infections or other stuff because the, mm. the skin wall becomes thinner. Yep. Um, so use it in sparingly. moderation. Or like when you have like a breakout, like really, really bad. Really bad. So um, from my experience... She couldn't remember the steroid that she used. <laughs> she kept asking her mom. So there's a few. So as you may know, there are different levels of the strength of the steroid. So one I always use, it's a medicated one called Advantan. So Advantan is... Oh, you remember? No, this is another one. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the strong one. This is the one where you should only use it like very sparingly, One or two days max and then stop. As a backup again, I have a background and my parents are also doctors. So <laughs> this is also their advice to me too when I was using the steroid. So just a few days at the most and then stop it and then use just like a calming cream. Mm. But I did have a weaker one. So if you look at the ingredients, look at for hydrocortisone. So hydrocortisone is like a really mm. Weak, weak steroid. So like they're the easiest to use a little bit more frequently. But there was one that I used that I can't remember. And then I did find a recent, I got recommended a few by my mom, who's a doctor, and some other people. Honestly, I put them on my face and it started to burn. I was like, oh my gosh, this is not working. So a common one is Elocon. Elocon is a really common cream. It may work for some of you, but for me, it didn't actually work. My mom gave me another sample and it's one called Illumovate. Illumin. So this one was great. <laughs> as soon as I put it on, it felt very soothing and it got rid of the um, the flare-up in a couple of days. So Would everyone kind of react differently to different creams? I feel maybe, because okay. at least for my skin again, everyone and my mum was like, oh, you should just use Elocon. Elocon works really well for people with eczema. So I was like, oh, okay. I tried it and it, just, it started burning. I was like, oh no, I can't use this. It's burning my skin. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I think it's case by case. Mm -hmm. Everyone's probably a little different. So steroids are for when it's flaring up really bad, mm. right? Mm. So in a perfect world, you could use steroids every day, but probably it's, not a good idea. Yeah, no, because <laughs> you can have side effects. So you mm. want to be using like cream that's just calming for your skin, and then sometimes when it gets really bad, start applying the steroid cream. Mm. But don't use it all the time. I remember my university friend, she had really bad eczema once that she had to wear a mask to mm. university. Mm. And I know that it really like impacts your everyday life. Mm. So yeah, hopefully if you can find your own solution, you can really have less of that stress in your life that should really not be something that takes up so much of a part of mm. your everyday stresses. So even though you don't have strong bouts, bouts of a bouts <laughs> of bowels. eczema kind of bouts, <laughs> like flaring up often now, mm. you still have the sensitive skin, right? Which is yeah. a bit more sensitive than normal sensitive skin. Yeah, I have to be still be really careful with what I put on my face. I know straight away if I put something on my face, if it doesn't work because it starts to burn my skin and it starts mm. to like tingle and then get really burny and then really bad, then I start to get a breakout again. I actually experienced that too. Oh really? Yeah, but my skin is more sensitive some days than others. I think mm. when I'm exposed to the sun, it's mm. even more. That's why I started like using things that said calming or soothing mm. because I started to feel like maybe my skin's becoming sensitive. And you guys know like there was a time when I started to avoid fragrance in my skincare products because mm. I felt like it was really harsh and acidic feeling. Right, right. Yeah. So I try to avoid that and that's why I've been like on this journey of finding 
products that are like paraben free or just really mild, really gentle and doesn't have unnecessary ingredients in there. The things <laughs> that can make eczema worse. So there are certain trigger points as well. So one mm. is the sun. So mm. being out in the sun too long, if you have a breakout, it will feel hotter and more painful. Regardless of sunscreen? Yeah. Okay. Same thing, hot food. Spicy things will make it worse. Stress. Stress will definitely make it worse. So if you're stressed out there, you need to calm down because Aww. it really starts to agitate. So the sun, spicy chili things, stuff. Or hot things, mm. and stress. And stress. Mm. Even if I um, use a product that's made for dry skin and I put it on my face, I'm like, oh my gosh, and it'll start to burn. burn. Or like um, moisturizing, like face masks. I'll put it on. I'm like, whoa, like. I don't think I can use this, so that's usually my testing point. Manuka honey is quite good for eczema because it soothing, has soothing properties in honey. Um, it's generally good for all skin. Yeah, it's just... My mother-in-law uses honey masks all the time. Oh, really? She does off. Yeah, so I tried some products and then I was like, oh, this is still burning my skin. So there must have been something in the, in the cream itself, aside from Manuka honey, that they had maybe mixed in. Parabens? No, because it, it was from a health store. It doesn't matter. Yeah, really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it could be a marketing gimme. So you still got to be careful and you really have to not go by what other people say. I would say test it for yourself. Where do you test it? I guess on your, your face. hand? Or you like maybe it. like on your chin where it was, it, if you flare up, it won't be um, a big deal. Okay. Back of your neck. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere where know. people won't like notice like this patch coming out uh, of your... I was in Singapore because my family's from Singapore. And I was searching for creams with my auntie and I came across this one cream. Um, it's by a brand called Dr. Dr. Organics. Organics. It's been, she's been talking about, about it all the time. time. Organics or Organic. So I found this cream, it was a Manuka honey cream and I was like, oh, maybe this will work. So I bought it and it was actually really good. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I have it here, but this is not the real tub. Mm. It's like a thick white it's cream. It's a thick white cream. The real tub comes with like an orange label in a glass tub. It yeah. smells like honey. Mm. It's very moisturizing and and it had a calming effect um, on my skin. So exactly. oh, like it's actually soothing <laughs> this pain on my face. Yeah, so I went out and bought a few tubs, but it's just in this because I'm at Jen's house, so I had to travel. It's really thick, but then like it blends in. It, I can feel it and then it hydrates and it's like a moisture barrier. Mm. And it refreshes at the end as well. So all the brands and products that have worked for you in the past you've recommended are non-Korean so far. Yeah, they're non-Korean um, so far. Do you have any ones that you've felt lately have worked well that's from Korean products? Mm -hmm. Actually, after Jen gave me a sample and I was like, oh my gosh, what is this? My skin feels nice and calm. But before that, I was using um, the green tea Innisfree set and I've been using that for about two, three years. So a long time. Mm. It's great. Like, honestly, it's the very that moisturizing. I've that. Mm. Mm. The serum and the whole moisturizing set. It's really good for dry skin, but because I needed that extra bit of moisture plus mm. the soothing aspect, it just didn't really do much for me. Mm. Um, at that time, and I was like, I need to start finding something better. So when she gave me this particular sample, I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to go and find the, the big samples. What like, was it? But this is the True Relief Moisture System from Etude House. And I was surprised, one, because it's Etude House. I like their makeup, but I've never really gravitated towards the skincare before. Me neither. Yeah, I was, I was like fully shocked. And mm -hmm. I was like, they make decent skincare. Very calming on the skin. The emulsion's 18,001. Cream, they come in a regular tub is 22,000. Really impressed with that. Even for me, testing it on the past few days, I felt like it would work even for people with my skin type. So mm. yeah, something that would work with eczema skin and just dry normal skin. Again, I don't have the actual thing, but another tester I had was the brand Opu. It's probably the cheapest, yeah. one of the cheapest Korean road shop brands, but they're so good. Mm, I've been yeah. really surprised by how good their products are, mm. even though they're so cheap. We went shopping yesterday to have a look in store because of this sample being so good and I got to try it as well. But yeah. it was, so it's called the non N O N C O Mastic Calming Cream. So I think a lot of Korean brands are doing stuff called Mastic. It had a very similar feel to the Etude House one. It was very calming, there was no fragrance and yeah, it just felt very soothing on the skin. Too Cool For School also has this line called Rules of Mastic, which comes with um, cleanser, enhancer, repair serum, and boosting facial toner. And then the cream is the only one that I have opened up and used. When we went in store yesterday, the Ethosem and Apu, I actually felt like this line is really, really similar to those products. They don't have a fragrance. They're really gentle, mild, and they have a milky sort of texture. I really find that it's good. I never feel that it burns on my skin. When I'm feeling sensitive, it's quite nice. 
and knowing that it's also very affordable. Mm. I actually always wanted to recommend this cream to you guys as well. So one thing I definitely feel these days is that Korean brands are coming out with more and more lines that are super gentle and trying to be as natural as possible. I think they've picked up that we're kind of sick of the really artificial sort of feel of products. Yeah, and they're all really good. Aww. So I have so many to show you guys. So yes, all of that will be in part two, which will be up in a few days together with this giveaway for Estee Lauder lipsticks. So stay tuned guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please press like, leave your comments down below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Where's my notification squad?